Hi, my name is George Grant. I'm a GGS Pro Technical Specialist with Griffin. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about flea beetles, the damage they can ensue on your crop, and some of the chemical options you should consider implementing to your program if this is a common pest for you on an annual basis. If you should have any additional questions, please feel free to contact us using the contact information listed on this slide. At some point during this presentation, we'll be going over various pesticides. Please note, there may be pesticides that are not listed in this presentation that are safe and effective for your crop. Also note that it's the grower's responsibility to follow any and all pesticide regulations, guidelines, and laws. Also, understand that labels do change unannounced. So if you're receiving a new bottle of something, it's important to read that label. All right, let's get into it. So with flea beetles, growers sometimes overlook these if they've never experienced them. However, growers that do experience them on an annual basis definitely understand how serious they can be on their crop. As we'll see in a few slides, they come in various different shapes and sizes, as well as the wide range of host crops that they can damage. They can damage both ornamentals and edibles. Notable ornamentals include mum, salvia, and sedum, and edibles include things in the solanaceae or nightshade family, as well as in the cucurbit family. They can also affect various fruit trees, such as apples. They have a chewing mouth part, and even though they're very small, they do feed in masses and create quite a bit of noticeable damage very quickly. The trick with preventing and controlling flea beetle is first understanding its life cycle. Unfortunately, with this pest, the larva and the adult form do a quite a bit of damage on plant material. Depending on the species, it'll have one to three generations per year, which begins with the adult overwintering in any available weeds and debris during the fall and winter months. The adults will then emerge, lay their eggs. This typically occurs around when the average daily temperature is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This corresponds with typically May and June, depending on where you are in the United States. They'll lay their eggs, the larva will hatch. The larva will then predate on any available weeds or above ground material. They'll pupate in the soil, then the adults will merge. As we'll talk about in a few slides, it's important to time your pesticide applications, either be a drench or foliar spray, depending on the life cycle and emergence of this pest. You can use the link provided on the slide by Dr. Waller at Rutgers University, where it shows a relative schedule of when the red-headed flea beetle, which is a common flea beetle species, as to when to time pesticide applications. I mentioned that flea beetles come in every shape and size. And as you can see from these various photos, Depending on the species, they can look quite different from each other, even both in the adult and the larval form. As you can see here, this is the larval stage of a flea beetle species, predating on the above ground portion of a sedum. Please note that depending on the species and what's available, flea beetles can, in the larval stage, predate on root systems. As you can imagine, this amount of damage on a root system could lead to something like pythium root rot. Given the various different species of flea beetle that could be identified on your crop, a commonality between them is the type of damage that they ensue. As you can see here, flea beetles use their chewing mouth part to create irregular or circular holes in foliage. Depending on the type of flea beetle and the crop they're predating on, they may not be able to create complete holes through the foliage and may be able to just damage the outer layers, as you can see in the previous photo. Regardless, in their high numbers and their voracious appetite, they can quickly take away the visual from the visual quality and the health of the plant. If you've ever hunted before, you probably understand why their damage is coined shot holes. This table outlines several insecticides that we know are relatively effective based on academic research and grow reports. These are important in preventing flea beetle infestations because they can be applied as a substrate drench. Now, there are several considerations to determine when these should actually be applied. A woody plant will take significantly longer, weeks to even months, to take up a pesticide systemically compared to a herbaceous plant. Substrate drenches are meant to attack the below ground and the above ground stages when we are using the systemics listed in the first two columns. The systemic chemicals listed here are taken up relatively quickly for herbaceous material and can provide at least five, six, five to six weeks of residual control. Azeractin containing projects such as As to Know can have added benefits as an insect growth regulator when tank mixed with other chemicals such as botanic garden. Some, re some research has been done to support the efficacy of flea beetle control and the larval stage by using Steinernemia carpicaceae, a beneficial nematode species applied as a substrate drench. However, this application method may not be economically feasible for very large production spaces. This table outlines various effective insecticides that can be applied as a foliar spray. 
Some of these are translaminar systemics, meaning that, that once they're sprayed, they are absorbed by the foliage and can kill the pest for some time after once the material is ingested on either side of the top or the bottom portions of the foliage. While others will require direct contact with the pest and have little to no residual. Once again, it's important to understand when the pests are first emerging out of dormancy and make these applications when they are first beginning to be visually seen as to minimize the amount of damage they can cause. Try to rotate modes of action when possible to prevent resistance issues, and also note that several frequent applications may be needed to cover the multiple generations this pest may have depending on where you are in the United States. Thank you for your time today. If you should have any additional questions, please reach out to your local Griffin sales representative or the GGS Pro team. Also, we highly value your insight, your recommendations, and ideas for videos going forward, so please feel free to contact us. Thank you.